This is one on one session with the Forum IS founder and director Ayush Sinha. In this session, students are asked questions to test their preparedness for the personality test. One on one sessions are not mock panel sessions. Anu, can you begin by introducing yourself to me? Uh, so my name is Anup Das. I come from the state of Odisha, and I have done my graduation and post graduation in zoology from University of Delhi. After that, I have been posted uh, uh, as assistant commissioner of income tax in uh, New Delhi, and uh, I have been working uh, to develop uh, as a, my personality and also inculcate my hobbies. So this this is what I have been doing. What hobbies do you have, Anup? Uh, so my hobbies are concerned with painting and uh, learning scripts of languages, and also uh, trying out new local uh, cuisines uh, across the country. So you are posted in Delhi currently. Yes, sir. You try out local cuisines. What are some local cuisines of Delhi that you have tried out? Uh, so especially I have I I what I remember the most is the food that I have eaten in uh, Chandni Chowk. especially there is one thing called uh, uh malai ki chaat that is a very uh, unique uh, uh, cuisine that is found in uh, found in the winter in old delhi and other than that i have tried uh, food that is being sold in para- uh, sold in parathe wale gali these are very unique to this city so these are the things that i have tried anup tell me something when we go to these shops so what yes. will happen is that they will all three or four shops will have the same name yes sir all claiming the lineage or the ancestry of one common person common shop owner now what happens is often you will see that outside the shops there will be photo of the owner of the shop sometimes what is the reason that they start pasting or putting the picture of the owner of the shop or the dhaba So the immediate reason is to show that that we are the legitimate uh, uh, heir of this uh, uh, legacy of cuisine. So in order to proclaim that, mostly they put the pictures. So what happened is I was traveling from UP to Haridwar and I saw a lot of Shiva dhabas, each with a different photo. Okay, sir. What would be the possible reason that they are putting their owner is putting his own photo, not his grandfather's or forefather's okay. photo, his own photo? What could be the possibility? Uh, think about it. Think for a moment. You can take your time. Think and tell me. Maybe he is trying to popularize his chain. and making it distinguishable from other chains that can be one of the reasons why uh, the owner will do that that is correct the second part the first part popularize not so much the second part he is trying to differentiate yes that is correct so what happens is when you open a shiva dhaba and you have a huge advertisement cost somebody yes. else will just open a shiva dhaba and people will get confused so in such a case everything can be copied but not the photo of the owner yes sir So that is the reason. Wonderful. So Anup, you are from Odisha, yes. Katak in Odisha. Uh, I was born there. Anup, tell me three or four things about Odisha and compare the cuisine of Odisha to the Mughlai cuisine that you have recently, you know, tasted. Uh, so that that is definitely a very uh, interesting thing because while I came from Odisha, the very uh, distinct taste I discovered here. the four important thing that distinguishes the food of odisha from mughlai cuisine will be the use of rice rice variety and the proportion of use of rice in odisha is very high compared to use of wheat in mughlai cuisine secondly the preferred meat the meat in odisha is generally fish or aquatic whereas in mughlai cuisine it is generally uh, mutton chicken uh, not much of fish thirdly when it comes to use of spices it is predominantly mustard and very subtle uh, flavors in uh, odisha whereas when it comes to mughlai uh, cuisine it is extremely rich with spices ghee and lot of fat consumption and thirdly when it comes to sweets odisha sweets are generally the uh, produced out of curdled milk whereas in case of mughlai cuisine it is generally the uh, uh, cooked milk over time that is khoya based so that are the four important difference between odia cuisine and mughlai cuisine 
Anu, what are the nature of industries that have come to Odisha? Uh, so recently? Overall, what is the nature of industries that have come to Odisha overall? So overall, a major industry that is a uh, major sector of industry that is present in Odisha is actually mineral-based industry, which are responsible for extraction of mineral, minerals. Secondly, uh, second line are the refineries that are present in the coastal part of Odisha. And uh, thirdly, there is a growing uh, uh, fishery industries are going, uh, fish and fish related products, especially in the coastal part of Odisha. These are the major industries that are uh, there in Odisha. Anu, if we see, Odisha did provide the kind of law and order, a predictable law and order that is generally not seen in the northern states. Despite that, why IT industry could not make it in a big manner, Odisha could have been the flag bearer of the IT industry in the north. Though I will not say that Odisha is a complete northern state. You know? So Odisha is somewhere in between, right? The north people think you are south, the south people think you are not. Isn't it the great dilemma? What is the reason that IT industry did not bloom like it did in, for example, in cities such as Hyderabad? I'm not saying you should have been like Bangalore, but even like Hyderabad. Why? Uh, so I'm not sure of the exact reason for that. But however, one thing can be pinpointed is towards the lack of basic infrastructure at the time when cities were trying to capture themselves as cyber hubs. So uh, that that acted as a uh, not so good factor uh, because of which Bhubaneswar could not, or for that matter, Odisha could not become the IT hub in East as at least. Uh, you are currently posted in income tax, isn't it? Yes, sir. What percentage of government's revenue is coming from income tax, direct taxes versus indirect taxes currently in the past budget? Uh, so it was uh, 5.7, if I'm not wrong, it would be exact, uh, what comes from direct taxes. And uh, uh, 5 point, uh, sorry, 4.9 is, I think, uh, is indirect tax, if I'm not wrong. So you are suggesting that the direct tax collection exceeds the indirect tax collection? Uh, so the, it is moving towards, again, uh, towards increasing uh, percentage of uh, in, uh, direct tax. But uh, last, uh, if, if I'm not wrong, last year it was almost similar. So I will definitely verify this information. Uh, this is what I last recall. So tell me, you are in the income tax. Yes. It is said that some people are not happy with the faceless assessment. The government sees it as a good governance reform. What is your take on it? Uh, so as I have, I'm posted with faceless assessment scheme as of now. So I can talk from my experience. The faceless uh, assessment scheme is definitely a very uh, good move towards bringing transparency and efficiency in the department. I understand there has been dissatisfaction, especially amongst uh, many taxpayers as well as within the department, because of the glitches that we are facing in the complete transformation that is needed uh, for a uh, smooth functioning of faceless assessment. Uh, specifically, some of them are uh, the lack of coordination due to technical glitches that we face within the department in handling the faceless assessment scheme. Secondly, all the SACs are, or the taxpayers are not comfortable with the scheme as they are not able to convey what they want to reflect in the scrutiny process. And uh, these are some of the technical issues that we are facing. And I believe uh, as much as I've, I've got to know from my uh, seniors, it has improved and it is the department is also working to make it more and more flawless so that the uh, intention of the government is fulfilled. There is a certain feeling in the government that welfare schemes, a lot of welfare schemes, they kind of create a dependency among the poor people. Whereas what they need to do is they need to become suction, they need to become capable of pulling themselves out of poverty. What is your view on this? So uh, we need to understand that there is a temporal aspect to this. So immediate need of the people is what is satisfied with the welfare schemes. And suction, the capacity building, is a long-term goal, which cannot be achieved within a short duration. As long as the capability is developed, meanwhile, welfare schemes are necessary to provide the basic requirement of our population. So therefore, both these aspects of capacity building and the welfare scheme needs to go hand in hand as long as the capacity is completely developed. You know, uh, if you see, the government has moved away from being a healthcare service provider to a 
you know, health insurance provider. Yes, sir. So is that a step in the right direction according to you? Uh, so indeed, sir. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, because government is trying, this is a very prudent decision on the part of the government. So as to ensure that the healthcare facilities are also provided and it leads to prudency. So therefore, I believe it is a good decision on the part of government. So you believe that providing healthcare insurance is more important than providing healthcare? Uh, no, sir. It cannot be uh, uh, spoken in that way. Uh, rather, it is a good move, but healthcare cannot be uh, uh, ignored. So uh, both needs to go hand in hand. But the step of introducing healthcare insurance is a very prudent decision. Do you think there has been a paradigm shift in India's foreign policy in the past few years? Uh, so I would agree to your statement that there has been a paradigm sh uh, no, shift. I'm not making a statement. I'm asking you this question. That is there a paradigm shift? So there has been shift, especially uh, uh, with our representation. Especially uh, India has been very vocal in its uh, different uh, international fora. And I also has been able to put forward its... Uh, 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 strategic autonomy in decision making, especially in the current scenario. So I believe there has been a great uh, voice that has been uh, visible in our foreign policy. Electric vehicles, there has been a push to bring in electric vehicles. And uh, what are the major challenges with electric vehicles beyond the charging stations? Amit? Because that is something that can be developed. What are the challenges do you see? Uh, so that uh, definitely government has put a lot of uh, efforts to introduce electrical vehicle and the challenges that we are facing as of now is first uh, firstly is about the lithium batteries uh, for which uh, the resource dependency has been there uh, thankfully uh, we have found reserves in uh, 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 the union territory of jammu and kashmir as of now secondly uh, uh, in order to shift uh, to the uh, electric vehicle we also are dependent upon uh, electricity generation, which itself is not uh, uh, equally present in all the uh, places. And uh, so as of now, I can think of these few points. You are already in the revenue service. What is your motivation for joining the civil services? So as I mentioned in my preferences, uh, it is uh, I have preferred Indian Foreign Service. And uh, because as a child, I was always... Uh, enticed by the idea that you can represent your nation and that enticement only started my inquisitiveness to find out about civil service examination therefore i have put uh, indian foreign service as my first preference all right you put the indian foreign service as your first preference yes sir anup uh, one last question you have done zoology yes sir correct tell me uh, these days we are talking of solar power plants and they have said that they are green, they are very environment and ecology friendly. But there are some people who clearly point out that solar power plants are also a threat to biodiversity. Can you tell me how? Uh, so solar power plants actually take up uh, this. They are reflective in nature. And I believe that may be misleading for the uh, avian species, that the bird species. Because of the uh, reflective nature of uh, the solar power plant, it might misguide them and therefore might be disruptive to their population. Anything else you can think of, Anup? Uh, no, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I'm not able to think anything else as of now. All right. Thank you, Anup. Your interview is over. Thank you, sir. So, Anup. Uh, you are good. Uh, you're, the way you are communicating, the best thing is, I think, the one reason why somebody gets good marks above average marks and others is the pace at which you speak. And I think that is something that naturally you are a slow speaker, which is extremely important given that young people speak at a very fast pace these days. So on those fronts and in terms of behavioral aspects, I have no uh, suggestions for you. I think you are good to go.